Anyways, let's move on. So we've got Nathaniel Atto on Zoom to bring us Prime Sports. Big conversation on the trending topic. I know CK Akono as well as his possible replacement. And that's what Nats, I'm throwing that conversation over to you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, it's good to be back. Uh, I missed you guys. Um, we miss we'll you too. We'll talk about all of that later on. But hey, um, Flex, uh, talk about Flex. Why don't we just add Flex to our respective names? So J Flex. Citizen Flex, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell well, you, but that, that's a sweet, that's a sweet video, uh, yeah. you know. And um, you know, they say the best comes from the West. So, uh -huh. Charlie, uh, big ups to Quasi Flex. Uh, I'm a Friday born, so maybe I'll call myself Kofi Flex. Flex. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know how yeah, much yeah, yeah. Uh, flex uh, CK Akono had put out earlier on, but definitely the flex didn't work out for him. I wonder what is going through his mind as we speak. But uh, so, what is the situation now with the whole two, 72 hours to find a new coach? And is that enough to find a replacement? I'm eager to find out as well. Okay, so Jay. Um you know, the three-member team has been put together, the Upper West Regional FA Chairman, uh, the Vice President of the Ghana FA, and an Executive Committee member in Randy Abbey have been put together to uh, uh, take up this assignment. This is, uh, you know, something that is very much known. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if we say 72 hours, we have to start counting the time properly because when the um, task was given, uh, it was some two days ago, so we've virtually got just about, uh, you know, 24 hours to go. So we've got barely a day to go. Uh, by close of business tomorrow, we should have a confirmation of who will be the next Black Stars coach. Now, uh, the thing is that there's been a lot of conversation about, uh, you know, where the coach will come from and what kind of qualities that, you know, the coach mm -hmm. will possess. Mm -hmm. And today, that is, that is a major, uh, you know, concern because there's been a lot of, uh, you know, post-mortem talk as well about Coach C.K. Akono's performance, having four wins, four losses, and two draws in his 10 games in charge of the Black Stars. And, you know, many people have also talked about how they want somebody with a strong character to take up this job. Because, you know, well, uh, like um, one third through the qualification series for the FIFA World Cup in Qatar, uh, you know, in 2022. And it's very, very important that we get it right with the remaining games, especially those that we played next month, uh, you know, against Zimbabwe. Now, so, now, let me ask uh, you, there is, let me ask you this question real quickly. So we usually blame... Um, the the coaches for uh, you know sometimes the co the coaches blame uh, the players not being in camp enough giving enough time to bond and prepare but in this case a coach coming in for within 72 hours before our next couple of games across the, seven, the next seven weeks would that be enough time for a coach to be able to identify the strengths and the weaknesses of our team all right there will will, will never be enough time i mean when it comes to national teams let's remember that the players are not always available for you to be uh, working with. They apply their, their trade in different places. Some of them are here in Ghana. Some are scattered across different exactly. uh, football destinations in Europe. Therefore, that job will be very, very complex. What the FA probably will do is to have a team, uh, you know, of scouts who will, uh, you know, provide certain reports or certain, you know, uh, comprehensive reports mm -hmm. of players and their performances over a certain period based on which uh, the coach is going to make his selections. Let's remember that ahead of our qualification for the very first FIFA World Cup in 2006, uh, we had a similar situation where Mariano Barreto, who's uh, currently the Kotoko coach, was in charge of the team. He had to go halfway through. And then uh, the Serbian Ratomir Djukovic uh, came in and, uh, you know, took the, the, the mantle and eventually Ghana qualified. So... Um, it is a very, very tough job. I can um, imagine. There is never enough time. There is never enough time, Jay, to qualify or to have a, a national team. I mean, the best thing that any national team coach will, will, will have is the full complement of his team of players who play everywhere within a camp for maybe like uh, a month or, or exactly. a month and a half, you know, where they get to play a lot of friendly matches and uh, consistent assessments are mm -hmm. done. So uh, their form can also be measured. And based on that, uh, you know, these players can either be given, um, you know, starting roles or otherwise. So, Nathaniel, who comes to take up this play? Yeah. You, you're, well, just uh, take us out through sports, but just answer this for me quickly before you go. In your opinion, should CK be given more time? Should, should he have been given more time uh, to bond with the players better? Or you are up for eviction? You are up for the eviction? Okay. I'm not going to give you a specific answer, and this is the reason why. Now, 
there are two sides to this coin, and that's the reason why it's always difficult to give this answer. Now, the next two games could have been used as, you know, the uh, the ultimatum or the measure based on which CK would have continued or would have been sacked, okay? Okay. So in as much as those next two games could have resulted in a recovery for the Black Stars, it could have also posed a very, very big threat in the sense that we could have lost you know, the first of the two games, yeah. which could have spelt a lot more doom. Remember that the Black Stars are currently third uh, you know, on the standings on, yeah. in that group. You understand? So uh, with that in the background or with that at the back of our minds, it then becomes very, very difficult. And at the end of the day, what is important is also to take big decisions and Remember that the coaching job is about hiring and firing. Somebody comes in, the job is not going very well. They have to lay their yeah. tools down and walk. And that is exactly what has happened with Coach C.K. Akono. Yeah. And so I think that, um, you know, uh, this is a decision that has been taken. The FA will take full responsibility for whatever happens post, post this. C.K. Akono. Exactly. And that is, especially if it doesn't go well. So we're hoping that the best decision will be made in the interest of Ghana football and in the interest of the progress of the Black Stars. And after that, we will see how things go regarding how uh, more yes. quality is brought on board for the Black Stars. Uh, well, the quality of the players is something that has been spoken about a great deal. And yes. most importantly, Jay, yeah. a coach that is returning or a coach that is coming into mm -hmm. the saddle must be given the free hand to work. Before I, I bring you our first story, Jay, let me just remind you of, uh, you know, the era of the late Sir Cecil Jones at Tukwe Fio, who yes. at the time had done very well with Accra Hearts vote. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, you know, was given the responsibility of handling the Black Stars. At a point when he realized that there was a lot of indiscipline um, amongst the uh, foreign-based players, he called their bluff, sacked all of them, and used a predominantly Accra Hearts book side to play in a game against the Super Eagles of Nigeria, which at the time had Yuanku the best, Kanus yeah. and um, all exactly. the other big names you could think about. Yeah. yeah. And Accra Hearts book played out a draw, an impressive draw with the Super Eagles of Nigeria. So at the time, the man Cecil Joe Satukwe Fio had a big personality and he was given the space to do his job. He took big decisions and he took responsibility for them. And that is what we want to see the Black Stars coach do. I'm talking about the next Black Stars coach. C.K. Akono yeah. was not treated fairly in terms of giving him the space to, to do operate. this job exactly. and take responsibility for the decisions yes. he took. Exactly. Well, uh, a conversation that we are waiting to see what will happen on our next games with our next coach. And like you said, rightfully said, um, it will be this, the decider on uh, how people will perceive the GFA and its decisions. But anyway, uh, take us into sports. Uh, we know this debate will still continue, Nat. All right, the debate will continue, and we're still here on Prime Morning. My name is Nathaniel Atto, and uh, glad to bring you a big dose of sport on the show. Let's now throw the focus more on the Black Stars and the coaching situation, because ex-Ghana International uh, Prince Tego has been uh, adding his voice to this big conversation. Now, he prefers to have a Serbian tactician in charge of the Black Stars. He says that the Serbians uh, understand the Black Stars and the Ghanaian football dynamics better than any other nationals. And at this crucial time, they are best suited for the job. Remember that Prince Tego played under um, the likes of Milovan Rajevac at the 2010 FIFA World Cup. He spoke to me yesterday on Sports Today on the Joy News channel. Let's take a listen to it. It's on course because, um, I mean, Ghanaians always want Ghana to qualify for the World Cup because of the excitement and uh, the way we perform in the World Cup, the previous World Cup, it's like it has become a tournament that everybody wants Ghana to go to the World Cup. So when you win your first game and you lose the second game, it becomes difficult. I mean to qualify, and um, I believe that what we Ghanaians need to think of, we have certain coaches that we brought them to Ghana that have made us qualify to the World Cup. When it comes to discipline, when it comes to call up, they don't tolerate any. I mean, indiscipline in, in, in the in the camp and all those things. They are mostly Serbia coaches. So I prefer if we are going to look for a coach, we need somebody who can be outspoken, who can speak to his words, who can, I mean, take a decision that no any GF member can interfere. These are the kind of coaches we need in, in Ghana. And like I said before, when it comes to, I mean, the tactical play of the body, we are very familiar with 4 4 2, and 4 4 2 makes always Ghana score more than two, three goals. But when you are playing at one top, it becomes a difficult. It's become very difficult. So I think we having a Serbia coach, I have worked with them for some time. 
and they came to the national team. I was able to work with one person, and I know how strict and I mean disciplined they are. I mean, I, I don't want to talk about the foreign coaches because I don't know. All right, so uh, that's uh, Prince Tego there, and uh, he played under Milovan Rajevac, who uh, sent uh, Ghana to the quarterfinals of the uh, South Africa 2010 FIFA World Cup. Just before we wrap it up this morning, let's throw the focus on Champions Tuesday and what happened last night, uh, you know, in the, uh, you know, the big games. Ah, Barcelona without Lionel Messi is a big subject because uh, they suffered a 3-0 trouncing at the hands of Bayern Munich, who beat them last season uh, 8-2 um, in a very, very interesting encounter. So, Barcelona suffered uh, a 3-0 loss at the hands of um, Bayern Munich. Also, Juventus uh, were able to do some magic and score some three goals uh, in their game last night. And of course, uh, it's uh, a good one for Chelsea as well, who recorded a 1-0 win. We can also talk about uh, you know, Manchester United, who were also in action. Uh, they recorded a result, and we've got the highlights. All right, so there we go. And uh, Juventus sure are on fire without Cristiano Ronaldo. And later today, we'll see Club Bruges play host to uh, Paris Saint-Germain for very, very uh, interesting reasons. Remember that, uh, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo's first game in Manchester United upon his return got a global viewership of over 8.6 million. And so we're expecting that tonight's game involving Club Bruges and Paris Saint-Germain will get big, big numbers. And um, also, later on, that big one between Liverpool and AC Milan is one that we'll be watching out for. And of course, we're going to be bringing you all of the big highlights. So uh, let's see how all of it goes. And uh, we sure are going to be talking some numbers, especially as I have you, Daryl. Uh, we're going to be talking some numbers tomorrow morning, uh, definitely, of viewership numbers of uh, the Champions League with uh, Messi playing for Paris Saint-Germain. So um, that's it for sport this morning. Uh, my name is Nathaniel Atta, and I have love for sport. Back